Hey, it's Luke with Out of Darts. This is our full slab build guide. Here you'll see everything that you need to build the blaster. If you print the parts yourself, your parts should look something like this. If you get them from us, this will be the color scheme. You'll see the primary here in Mermaid's Tail, the secondary in Tangerine Orange, and the accent in this galactic black. You'll also see all the hardware down here included in the kit, and then you will need the following tools. You will need a pin punch, although you can also get away with a used Nerf motor. I'll show you that later. You'll need a number one screwdriver, a number two screwdriver, a scissors or other cutting utensil, a pliers, some E6000 adhesive, and some Loctite, and we would recommend the blue type. You are also likely to need a hammer or a mallet, a paper towel, a water or spray bottle or just water, and a clamp or rubber bands to glue up your plunger tube. You may also want a pair of snips if you are going to be printing your own blaster. Everything you see here minus the tool section down here is included our, in our kit. So if you order our kit with the 3D parts, you should be good to go. In addition to this video, we also have a tips and tricks video. That's a separate video from this one. And it runs you through all of the general maintenance and operation and maintaining your blaster over time. Without wasting any more time, let's get going. Your very first step is to install the sort of fiber optic site. And this is just a piece of 1.75 filament. You're going to simply shove it through these holes and clip it off with a pair of snips, or you could get away with an X-Acto knife or something similar. Now, if you bought them from our shop, these will come pre-installed because we do think they're a little bit of a pain to install. And it's a lot easier for us to do this since we already have the right color filament. First, we're going to start with our stock. You're going to take all of the components you see here, and we're going to first assemble our three parts of the core. After you've done this, you can attach the side panels. There are six side panels, three on each side, and they each get one of the 440 screws through to connect to the plastic. You're probably using a number one screwdriver like this. I'm going to go ahead and use my driver to save a little bit of time. Now that you've got your stock assembled, you can go to the rear of the stock and install the butt plate. Two of the same 440 screws go inside there and you screw them in place. Next, we're gonna install one of the side panels, just the right side panel for now. And it'll be three more of the same 440 screws. Next, we're going to assemble the lever. Starting with the trigger, we're going to take this 440 screw here and we will uh, screw it most of the way in. This can be adjusted a little bit more later. We'll go to about there. Then we'll take our shortest pin and we'll drop that into that spot right there. And then we'll take our trigger and drop it down on top with the point down here. And you want to make sure that that can freely move. Uh, it is possible to get this in the wrong position up here, so make sure that you're lining up back here like this. Then we'll take the other side of the trigger guard, and we'll drop in two more 440 screws. Now we're going to tie our piece of elastic. We're going to tie a good knot in one end, leaving just a little bit of excess room. After you tie one knot, pull that tight and tie a second knot to make a double knot. It's not too picky what time, type you do here, um, but a square knot is probably best, but you really can't go too wrong. You just need that knot to be large enough where it can't be pulled through. Then we're going to feed that through this hole here, and it's going to go into the trigger, up through the trigger, and we'll pull it all the way out. At this point, you can go ahead and snip the excess off of the knot end, but don't go too close to it. You want to leave a little bit of slack there. And if you like, you can hit that with a lighter to actually uh, singe that a little bit, but it's not required. Now we're going to pull this as taut as we can and tie a knot as close to here as possible and repeat that double knot process. Uh, we'd give you plenty of extra paracord. So if you do have a problem, just pull it out, start over. If it's your first one, it might take you a try or two to get this uh, set up. But when you're done, you should be able to feel the trigger reset all the way to the forward position. And 
and that should about do it. So I'll go ahead and tie a second knot. And then again, once you've got that and you're sure that your trigger feels like it's pulling back, go ahead and you can snip off the excess. Next, we're gonna install our mag release. First thing you're gonna do is take one of these 440 screws and you're gonna put it into this hole here. This screw's sole purpose is to stop the pin from going too far out the other side. Then you're going to push the pin in to position while holding the mag release in the correct spot, working it through this hole here. Now I'm gonna use a pin punch, but like I said before, you also could use a used Nerf motor and actually just use that and bang on the back of the Nerf motor. This is just one from a stock blaster. You'll feel that back out and then this hole should be clear here. And at that point you can put your second 440 screw to trap that pin in place. Now that we've got that installed, we're gonna go ahead and take our elastic and we're gonna kind of perform the same operation we did with the trigger. We're gonna tie a double knot. And again, I would recommend you can singe this with a lighter or a heat gun, or whatever you prefer. And you're gonna run this out and through and back around, pulling it tight and tying another knot. And before I cut that off, I'm gonna make sure that a talon mag actually does go up and seat properly. You can see it should look just like that. Don't worry about it. if you can push it past, it won't affect it once the blaster is put together. And repeat cutting and singeing this side. When your mag is seated in here properly, you shouldn't be able to pull this out with a firm tug. If you can pull it out, uh, you'll want to actually tighten this and maybe retie your elastic. Now we're going to assemble the plunger head. First, you're going to take this piece here and you're going to put it together like so. And there are two 440 screws, one on either side that screw into the plunger head arm. Now you can take the top piece of your plunger head and put two 440 screws down the top to attach it together. Now we're gonna take our first O-ring and we're going to overlap it on every other one of these terminals or tabs. So it should look something just like that. And then we're gonna take our regular O-ring and we will put that behind it. Then we're gonna take our RAM and install our O-rings. There are two of the smallest O-rings and they just pop right on here. One, two. And you're gonna to wanna to put just a little bit of lubricant of your slug slime on there. Not too much, just a tiny bit. Not soaking wet, just a little bit. And then you can take your receiver end and actually kind of work this in and out a few times. Spread that around a little bit. Don't worry about this right now. I'm gonna show you on a different piece. This is just our fully assembled one because this has to sit and dry and we didn't wanna wait on the video for that to happen. Now we're gonna take our turnaround. The turnaround is what actually literally turns the air around from the plunger tube to the barrel and we're going to install our O-rings. First, you'll take your dash one, two, three, the larger O-ring and just drop that in place. Then we'll take our two smaller O-rings and you're gonna work them down into two channels inside here. I found it helpful to use a takedown pin to help sort of get it into place because my pinkies are large enough that it's sort of challenging to get them in there. And the final assembly should look like that, two parallel O-rings. Next, we're gonna take the plastic thumb screw and the accompanying nut, and we're going to drop them in place here to actually lock the barrel in place. Easiest is to just set this down like this and kind of work that hex nut in place like that. Then hold it with your finger, flip it over, and thread this into place. Now you don't wanna thread it all the way in yet, just a couple threads in is good. Um, that way you'll be able to get the barrel in easy later. Now we're going to combine the magwell and the turnaround. This is glued because it's ready from another blaster build uh, for the video, so we don't have to wait for that to cure. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this part right here and you're gonna add two 440 screws and screw it in. But again, I'm going to do this on the one that we are actually gonna finish the video with. At this point, yours should have this little extra piece attached here. You're gonna slide these two pieces together. 
and you're gonna put two screws in down here to combine these two pieces together. And you wanna do this before you've attached the plunger tube. The reason you wanna do this is once the plunger tube's here, you don't really have enough room to work. And those should be flush just like that. Now we're gonna actually glue our plunger tube on. And I'm gonna use E6000, but you could potentially use super glue or an epoxy. We're gonna glue around this ring. We are careful not to get any of the glue. Ideally not get any glue on the O-ring. Technically, if you do get glue on the O-ring, it's not gonna cause any, any problems. So we're gonna add glue everywhere we can access. And this is where it might be handy to have a piece of paper towel or a cloth and a spray bottle around. But then we're gonna put this on and we're going to twist it into place. So all the way down, to give it a good twist and make sure that you can see a good seal all the way around after that we're going to take a i'm going to take just a spray bottle this is just water and i'm just going to clean up any excess any overage i see i've got a little bit drip there so i'm just going to wipe that off after i feel good about that there are two ways to let this cure. The first is you, uh, you just basically need this to clamp together. So you can use rubber bands or what we do here in, in house is a, just a big clamp. And I'll show you the rubber band method just because more people may have rubber bands than they'll have woodworking clamps available, but use whatever seems easiest to you. So what I would recommend is just two large rubber bands, one each direction. That one broke, so we'll ignore that. But assume, pretend there's two on there, one on each side, and then you're going to set this aside and not touch it. Uh, you're going to want to follow the instructions on the type of glue you're using. If you're using super glue, it's going to be a lot quicker. But for this E6000, we actually leave this overnight, but at least a couple hours would be a good idea. Uh, fortunately for you, we can continue filming the tutorial with the other one that we've already got glued and ready to go. Now we're going to assemble the uh, bottle nose up front. There are two screws here that are gonna go into these two holes. These are the 440 screws, the smaller ones, with the sling point down in that direction. Now we're going to install our catch and our elastic band, which is essentially what acts as our spring. Now, I find it easiest to do this before you've put your bars in, and we're going to basically double this up and run it along the channel there, just like that. And then after that, we're going to take the sloped edge and that needs to face that direction. And we can just drop that into place and then this should have nice tension move up and down. That's your assembled catch. Now we're gonna install our bars. You're gonna to wanna to take the larger hole end, not the tapped hole, and we're gonna just slide those in here. And then we're gonna take one 440 screw, the smallest screws again, and uh, screw that down in. Now it's worth noting that these screw holes don't actually clamp the bar down, but you want them to be past flush here. And uh, the reason they don't clamp them down uh, specifically, the reason we don't make these holes smaller is because this is a dual purpose hardware that's used on Captain Slug products. And Silly Butts did this to avoid special machining required just to make these, this one product. Now we're gonna take this piece here and we're going to slide this guy in like that. And there's a pretty obvious hole there to drive one of the short pins through. Now you may need to actually tap this in with a little bit of force, but we don't wanna to go too far. You wanna go just far enough so it's flush. This should still rotate nice and freely, but shouldn't have too much play left to right. Now we're gonna take that assembly along with the handguard and we're going to install it onto the blaster. So first you're gonna slide this down all the way along these rails till it's flush. And then you'll notice there are one, two, three, four, five, six holes. They correspond to the six holes in your handguard. And there is a channel here that captures and holds the elastic as well. So you're gonna to wanna to line that up, push that all into place and install the six screws. Now we're going to assemble our sights and top rail. So first we can go ahead and do the sights themselves. You're just gonna slide them on. The flat portion should face back towards you and then each one gets a 440 screw through the side. Then we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna take the open hole here and thread it in and you want it to line up with the first hole here. 
And then we're gonna put a single screw down through the center again, like we did earlier. This isn't gonna go all the way through. It, it holds by just being partway into that hole. And if you give that a little tug, it shouldn't move around front to back. Then we can slide our two rail portions on. The first one should line up here. There's a beveled portion here so you can single load darts from the right side of the blaster. Now we're gonna install our ram. You're gonna take the last two screw holes here and drop a screw into each one, and they will line up here. Next, we're going to assemble the trigger linkage, starting with this piece right here. You've got a little insert piece here, which is keyed on one side, kind of a D-shaped, and we're gonna put that in like that, and we're gonna put one screw in prior. If you're noticing some of my 3D parts look a little used, it's because this blaster has been assembled and disassembled multiple times. Then you're gonna take your brass insert part here and drop that over the top followed by this little washer with a little bevel, beveled cutout here, and the screw is gonna go down in through there. You'll wanna check that this does fit and spin just fine. If it's our prints, you shouldn't have any problem because our tolerances have been uh, working out pretty well overall. Now we're going to install our threaded rod into our brass piece here. Uh, we use brass threaded insert. We had Silly Butts uh, redesign this part to make it more uh, reliable and a little easier to tune. The original one is just a plastic fit. We didn't care for that quite as much. Uh, so you're gonna put a drop of thread locker on here. You don't need a ton, but you do want this to hold tight. Uh, it's worth noting that the cure time on this is supposed to be hours to 24 hours. So you've got enough time to get this in now. Um, you can thread it in all the way, and then we will tune this once it's on the blaster, but the thread locker will make sure that it stays in place. Now we're gonna begin our final assembly. First, you're going to take a short pin and the medium size pin. The short pin is going to go right here and the medium size pin is going to go right here. If these are tight, don't worry about it. Just push them as far as they go in and then flip back around. Next, we're gonna take our trigger and lever and we're just gonna drop that onto this top one here. Then we're gonna drop in our trigger linkage like so and this bar should sit on top of there, but you should be able to kind of put everything back together. Now we're gonna put in our top rail. There's a little notch back here and that's just going to kind of sit into that little notch. And then there are two screws from the opposite side. So I'll kind of grab this whole linkage, flip it over. And we're gonna drop two screws into these two holes and attach our top rail. Now we're gonna install this left plate. Uh, First, you're gonna make sure that your bar is pointing straight forward and the, that the two pins line up and go into their corresponding holes. You may need to push on this pin from the back side over here just to make sure that it's actually going through and connecting the two panels. Then you can take four screws, one, two, three, and four, and screw all four of those in. Now we're gonna assemble our plunger tube and install our magwell on the blaster. Uh, first, we're gonna take some of our slug slime that's included with our kits, and we're going to add a few drops around on the O-ring itself. It's also a good idea to lubricate this actual catch point here and the very end here, which interfaces with the actual trigger, and that will help ensure a, a smoother trigger pull. And uh, go ahead and kind of move that around in the plunger tube a little bit to distribute some of that. And then we're gonna slide that on there. Then we're gonna take these uh, transfer bars, I think that's what they're called anyway, and we're going to actually install them. Now the cotter pins, these are the long pins, can go from either side, so it kind of depends on the look you want. One side will have uh, the little cotter pin on the end of the pin, and the other side will just be flat. I'm gonna go ahead and install from this side just to illustrate the installation. But you can swap them either way, depending on your preference. And then we're gonna drop the other one on this side. And then we'll take our little clips and we'll actually get them, put them on just like so. It is worth noting, uh, we haven't had any issues with these breaking or anything because they don't really have any, any load. You could if you wanted to replace them with metal, but we don't really see the purpose. It's definitely not necessary. And flip that back around and we'll continue assembly. 
Now we'll take our barrel and we're going to install that. So that just uh, seats in the O-rings here. You will need to make sure that your uh, little thumb screw here is, is retracted enough to allow this. And you wanna make sure you give a little bit of pressure because this has got a seat fully there and then you can tighten down that thumb screw. And that's plastic thumb screw so it will not act, uh, hurt or scratch your barrel. It's worth mentioning there are two O-rings on the barrel, so you do not need to lubricate that. The O-rings dry fit will make a great seal without any lubrication. Now we're gonna assemble the front muzzle and bars with the rest of the blaster. This is probably the most finicky part because you are going to have to kind of thread together one, two, three, four, five, six pieces simultaneously. So what we're gonna do is first you wanna make sure that your catch gap here is facing downwards. And then we're gonna kind of thread everything together, starting with the two bars. Now, if you're doing this yourself, I don't know that I would do it on a table like this. I would stick the butt of the blaster on the table and face everything up. But for illustrative purposes, I'm going to do it this way. The first thing that's gonna connect is these two bars are gonna go through, then the barrel is gonna go through the hole. Make sure that this is staying straight and you keep the actual catch up. And we'll just kind of keep working everything together. Next, we'll get this top bar going in. And then finally, make sure that stays flipped up and work the rest of it until everything is snug and tight together. Now, depending on the spring load you've got in there, this may be trying to push itself apart. If it is, put this into your waist or onto the desk or a table, and you're gonna put your single screw in the top up here. So I'm going to actually back away from the table and I'm going to do just that. I'm bracing the stock against my waist and I'm going to screw this in at the same time so I'm not trying to fight the blaster. Now we're gonna put one screw here and one screw on the opposite side into the same hole. And these just thread into the plastic and should go flush. Now these two small screws, one on either side are, are optional. If you plan to be swapping your spring frequently, I wouldn't recommend installing them. I would instead just omit them because the larger screw will hold the bars in place just fine. Now we're gonna put our side panels on, but we're gonna hold off on the left side. So just set the left side aside. But the right side, we will flip around and we will install. This gets three 440 screws, one, two, and three. And then with your number two screwdriver, you can put the larger screw in here to solidify everything. Now I'm gonna show you how to install the included Silly Scar barrel. First, you're gonna take the these two pieces apart if they were shipped to you assembled. You're gonna slide the back part on and slide on one O-ring and then thread the two parts together. And you want this portion of the scar barrel to be as far back on the blaster as possible and tighten this up as tight as you can get it with your thumb and you should be good and sealed. Now, before we put this last panel on, we're gonna tune the threaded rod. I will also cover this in our tips and tricks video as far as tuning the slab. But uh, what you'll do is you'll first wanna try and see if it catches. If you do, if it does catch, then see if it fires. Now, if it doesn't fire, it means that this rod is too far in that direction to fire. So we're gonna take pliers here and we're just going to work this a turn at a time that way until we actually get it to fire. Now, it's a good idea if you are gonna fire this, try not to dry fire it. And you wanna make sure that once, once you've got this working, it should catch reliably and it should fire every time with the normal trigger pull. So run a few cycles and there you have it. You are set up. Then we can install our last panel. I've got three screws here ready to go, the 440. And then lastly, our number two screwdriver with the larger screw here. And there you have it. We now have a fully assembled slab blaster and we can fire off a few shots just for fun on camera here. Hope this has been really helpful for you. For more information on tips and tricks and tuning of the blaster, we do have a completely separate video for the slab blaster as well. Until next time, I'm out of darts.